Welcome to Bounce Forward, the home of wellness with easy tips, how-tos, do's and all the don'ts to keep you moving forward in the healthiest, happiest way possible. If you love to feel good, if you're sick of wearing sarongs over your bathers, hiding behind sunglasses, not getting in all the photos because you feel self-conscious, then this is a podcast for you. This here is a positive, safe space where we celebrate the small wins and hopefully give you the support and the confidence you need to feel your absolute best. Today, we're talking about cheat days. Cheat days, yay or nay. Now, in order to say you've cheated, you have to presume that you're on a diet with some pretty strict and heavy rules and regulations in your head. But that's the first problem. You're on a diet. You're not eating intuitively, mindfully. There's deprivation, no foods, perhaps guilt attached, and you're already feeling like crap. But there's light at the end of this miserable food tunnel, you think. It's called a cheat day, and you've granted one to yourself this coming Sunday, where you can eat whatever you want, a relaxed day off from all of the stress of monitoring your food. Now, I first was introduced to cheat days in the world of bodybuilding. I was in my early 20s, next level fit, and for some dumb 20-year-old reason, I decided to enter a bodybuilding competition. Now, I had a couple of months to diet. I found a coach. He put me on a diet of steamed fish and veg pretty much, and I was really disciplined with it. But he also suggested that I could have what was called cheat days. And every Sunday, I was allowed to eat whatever I wanted, pizza, pasta, uh, ice cream. Oh, I love the ice cream. Biscuits, fish and chips, you name it. I could have it, anything I wanted, as long as I was back on the steamed fish and broccoli on the Monday. And so I took him up on it. I thought, I'm going to try this. And I did it. But every Monday, I felt so sick. My stomach would be distended. I'd have digestive issues. Uh, My mood would slump. I'd start to feel guilty because I had gone off my diet. I'd feel gassy and lethargic and sometimes even physically ill. I really had no idea what I was doing. And I apologize to any bodybuilders out there listening. What are you doing? You're doing it all wrong. I was 20. There wasn't a lot of information back then. And when comp day rolled around, it had worked. I was lean. I had abs on top of abs. I was in proportion. All of the things that the judges look for, I had. I trained really, really hard and I couldn't believe the transformation. I competed with no expectations and I won. But in reality, I hadn't won. I had actually lost a lot of things. I'd lost my healthy relationship with food. I'd lost my period my normal eating patterns. I was crashing hard after the cheat days from the blood sugar spikes and then the big crash. I had digestion issues and I really had a lot of guilt and shame around the whole way I had gone about the dieting and preparation for the competition. I started to see the all or nothing mentality creep in even after the competition had finished. I was in this cycle of eating really well, probably under eating during the week and then stuffing myself on the weekends. This starving stuffing cycle, which you may be familiar with, really did lead to a fixation of being obsessed with the scales to see if the cheat days had made any difference to my progress and also to a binge eating mentality. It wasn't good. To be honest, it took me a while to recover from this negative experience of being part of that world and getting back to eating normally again. My experience with cheat days, they were a big nay. But here's how cheat days are meant to work for bodybuilders and elite athletes. Like a cheat days for dummies kind of scenario. I'm going to talk you through it right now. Cheat days in bodybuilding are also known as refeed days or high carb days. And they're strategic. They're implemented for three reasons. One, to refill glycogen stores from intense dieting because when you're on this intense diet where you're restricting foods and you're restricting portions, the body gets depleted. 
So high carb days replenish the glycogen stores and create a fuel for the next training phase. You actually feel a boost of energy, you feel a bit better, and it kickstarts your training again. Two, to boost metabolism. The cutting phase in bodybuilding is hardcore and it can be really long and really restrictive. And you don't want your body to go into what I call starvation mode, where it stops burning fat because it thinks it's being starved. So it's holding on to the fat stores. So having a cheat day signals the body, there's no need to starve. There's no need to store fat. You can keep burning fat. Here's some extra carbs. Here's some extra sugar, but you can keep burning the fat. And that's really how you get leaner and the metabolism fires up again. The third reason and the most important reason is for that psychological relief. Because you're on such a strict regime, you need that freedom to just eat whatever you want. And I'm talking about being in a severe calorie deficit, like a bodybuilder. So that's how it sort of works for bodybuilders or elite athletes. And usually they work with dietitians or nutritionists these days to strategically work out how often they want to cheat and what they cheat on. And it's very controlled. But what I've seen from my clients is average gym goers, weekday warriors turning up to the gym and saying, I'm going to have a cheat day. But they're not in a calorie deficit. They're not in a strict diet that warrants a cheat day, which will then fire up the metabolism or refeed or refill those glycogen stores. You know, you've really got to be on a strict diet for it to work. It's not going to work for for just the average Joe. So I made a vow to never do a cheat day ever again. It was messing with me. That is until I was hired to be part of a reality TV series, The Biggest Loser. My first week on the job, it was like the first day at school, I rocked up, I met my new classmates. There was a commando, Michelle, Shannon. I was nervous. And the producers had a great idea. They said, we're going to have you move in with the contestants, live with them for a week, and you're going to eat and drink everything they eat and drink for a week, and we're going to see how much weight you put on. I called this binge week, and it was so full on. I moved in with my contestants and I ate burgers, pizza, pasta, ice cream, chocolate, relentless. Everything I ate in the week was white. I remember the pasta disaster became very famous at the time. Three types of cheese, three types of cream with pasta in a big mixing bowl, huge bowl. And we'd eat that every dinner. For lunch, it was a whole wheel of camembert cheese in between two pieces of bread, and we'd have like three of them. There was ice cream for breakfast. It was out of control. And at the end of the week, the producer said, jump on the scales on national TV. We had like a million viewers, and I was weighed, which was really humiliating. I'd put on over five kilos It was a horrible feeling. Five kilos in a week. The good thing is the trainers, our life was exercise and eating well. We had a lot of knowledge to draw from. So we knew how to undo the five kilos, how to get back on track, how to have the motivation to lose the weight or get healthy again. We could do that. But it was the contestants that were suffering because we regularly had temptation on the show. And if you're not familiar with Temptation, it's when morbidly obese contestants on The Biggest Loser could eat something that was not healthy in order to win power in the game. Now, this was particularly heartbreaking to watch because the the trainers would all have a fridge for their contestants and the contestants would have access to the trainer's fridge full of healthy foods and we would stock it with all of the healthy foods that we wanted our contestants to eat and they could cook and eat nutritious food throughout the week. But the temptation was always something that would mess with their thoughts, their digestion, their bodies. I mean, it was always really bad. 
And I saw in the contestants that it triggered heightened anxiety around food, more obsession with the scales and potential binge eating episodes. Now, this is because these contestants were already morbidly obese and already binge eaters and struggling with binge eating disorder. I was even triggered by it. I mean, (laughs) I had already had really bad experiences with cheat days and all of that in my past, and it was no good for anyone. I saw that the dissatisfaction with their weight, it moved into body image, and there was dissatisfaction with their selves, and their self-esteem was damaged. It was really, really heartbreaking to see the contestants cry on the scales when they put on weight due to taking temptation. When the contestants took temptation, my heart would sink because we work with the contestants for over seven months in a series. We look after their nutrition and their training seven days a week. We are with the contestants. They have access to psychologists and they work. we work so closely to look after every part of their health and well-being on the show. And then to see it all be undone by taking a massive temptation, one of my contestants took a temptation, which saw her put four kilos on in a week. I think they, it was like a 24-hour thing where she was eating for 24 hours. It was crazy. So it really did make my heart break to see all our good be undone and all the things that I was trying to teach the contestants, such as listening to your body, listening to your hunger cues for hunger and fullness and being able to be mindful around food and have power around your food. It it just was so upsetting. It felt horrible watching Temptation back then, and I'm talking 10 years ago. And it wouldn't happen in this day and age now because we are more focused on holistic wellness, which I love seeing the fitness industry move away from being obsessed with the scales and focusing more on holistic health. So how do you work towards your weight loss goals but not deprive yourself of the things you love? The first step is to not be on a strict diet. I say you have to undiet for life. Get rid of the fad diets. The aim is to eat healthy whole foods across a range of food groups, always prioritizing protein because protein will keep you fuller for longer. That's the secret. And it keeps your blood sugar stable. You don't need to cut any food groups out. Cheat days can completely disrupt consistency of healthy eating. So you really want to just focus on eating really nutrient dense foods, full of vitamins, minerals, and fiber your fruits, your veggies, your whole grains, your lean proteins, and your healthy fats, nourishing the body. I always say don't focus on calories, focus on nutrients. The next step is to integrate those treats. And this is something that I did with my contestants on The Biggest Loser. And I'm in contact with many of them now, and they're thriving. Some have become personal trainers. Others are learning to do like really cool Olympic lifts, which I just love. And they're getting stronger and stronger day by day. And I always say to them, a treat will never make a difference, but a binge will. So work treats into your week to avoid the binge. Make sure that you're having a croissant with coffee if that's what you love or a little bit of dessert every now and then. I love the 80-20 rule. 80% healthy, 20% treats. It's such a winner. Approaching food this way will save you a lot of emotional and psychological distress and you won't feel like you failed or have guilt or shame around going off an eating plan or going off a diet. It just simply becomes your way of eating. It's part of your life. Now, if you want to lose weight, I hear those who are saying, but you have to have a calorie deficit. You have to restrict what you eat in order to lose weight. No, you don't. No, you don't. You need to monitor your energy input and output, yes. You need to up the output, up the exercise, and you do need to control your portions, but you don't need to cut out any foods. So you do need to control your portions of treats as well as your portions of your healthy food, the 80%, and you balance it out with a bit of exercise, and that is how you lose the weight. Some people may track their food. I know that food trackers work for some people, and you may pull back the food 
during the week so that you can have a more free weekend. But at what cost? That starving, stuffing cycle is just so unhealthy. You really do want to create a healthy relationship with food and good positive body image. So, cheat days, yay or nay? For me, the nays definitely outweigh the yays here and it's a no for me, this one. How about you? I hope you enjoyed this ep. Please don't forget to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. I love talking to you, so I would love to hear from you. Follow me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO or email into the show. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening and happy days.